Hey guys, this is Patrick from Basement Noise Productions. Um, this is a video I've actually been wanting to make for quite a while now. Um, the whole basis of it is how to get great results using GarageBand. Um, free software, comes with any Mac. Um, what GarageBand is, is a DAW, which does stand for Digital Audio Workstation. Um, other, you know, digital audio workstations, uh, some examples are Cubase, Logic, Pro Tools, Reaper, um, all varying quite a bit in price. Um, you know, all have their own benefits, all have their own downfalls. Um, however, you know, even with free software like GarageBand, you can still do a lot more than you think, and that's really what I want to cover in this video today. Um, the main, main reason I want to make this video is because there's a very large stigma in the audio production world, um, you know, among different producers, etc. That, you know, if you use something like GarageBand, you're not good. You know, it's, you're not going to get good results, you're, you're an amateur, you suck, and, you know, I just kind of want to break that negative stigma. I'm really, you know, really, really sick of, of all the negativity kind of in the industry, and, you know, like, I mean, obviously there's a lot of good people out there, but I just, I just kind of see that a lot with, you know, certain forums I might be a part of, or, you know, even just in the real world out there, people that I know. Um, so with that being said, um, I just want to show you that you don't need super fancy software or plugins to make a good product. You know, a lot of a lot of people get stuck on the thought that they need Logic, Pro Tools, Cubase, etc., to make um, something even worthwhile, even worth releasing, which really isn't the case. I mean, you know, that's like I personally use Pro Tools most of the time myself. Um, however, I definitely just want to show you today that. I can go ahead and make a really, really solid track on GarageBand and kind of show you how you would be able to implement that as well. I'm um, just kind of show you some ways around some of the, um, what I would call limitations on the software. Um, but honestly, you know, you finesse anything enough, there's ways around the limitations and there's ways that you can figure things out. So yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and get, uh, get GarageBand fired up. Um, go ahead and we'll, we'll get started on a song. I'll show you guys what you can do to get an awesome, awesome song with GarageBand. All right, guys. So um, as you can see, we just opened GarageBand. Um, you see it brings up this window, which gives you a few options. Um, if it doesn't bring up this window, you can just go File, New, and it will bring up that same window, actually. Um, with that being said, um, right here, you can kind of see where your input what your input device is set to and what your output device is set to. Um, we're going to choose Empty Project and click Create. Um, from there, it'll bring up a project. Um, I believe most of the time it will bring up one virtual instrument by default. Um, just brought up the classic electric piano. Um, in order to choose what instrument you want to use, you can go and click what I just clicked up there in that top left hand corner. kind of looks like a fi filing cabinet, file drawer. Um, we're going to go to go to Drum Kit. And then I don't have most of these downloaded because I haven't really used GarageBand on this computer yet. Um, with that being said, I see SoCal down there. That's a cool name. <laughs> so let's go ahead and give that a shot. Um, and if you don't see this um, instrument pop up by default when you open GarageBand, you can click on that plus button up there. And then just go ahead and click choose software instrument in the far left over there. Um, and then click create. Um, this does not apply right now because we already had one created, so we can just hit cancel. But if it's not there, or if you want to add another instrument, you just do that, and then you can hit create. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and click up there on that little knob looking button that kind of opens up the user interface of the plugin. The scissors will open up the editor. Um, in this editor, this is your piano roll. This is where you actually will program the hits to the drums. So any. Um, of those keys that you program a note to, it will trigger the drum plugin to play the kick, the snare, tom, cymbals, you know, whatever note you note you program it to play. Okay, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is set our tempo here. Um, that being said, um, the cool thing about when you're programming drums is if you ever want to change the tempo after you've programmed something, um, basically each hit that you add in, into your piano roll is what is called MIDI, also known as Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Um, that will actually change with the project's tempo if you do end up changing the tempo later on. Uh, the same does un unfortunately does not apply to audio. 
but it's cool if you do want to if you program a jump part and you want it to be a little faster or a little slower um, so how i'm programming these hits in here is i'm holding down command and then clicking on where i want to program it on the grid and the piano roll um, over here we have velocity velocity is basically how hard or soft a hit will be um, you see if i turn that way down um, play that really quick for you it's going to sound a lot softer then let's go ahead and highlight it bring it up all the way and you can hear that sounds a lot stronger like it's a lot harder hit on the drum kind of show you how to finesse velocity um, in order just to get a bit more authentic um, real drum sound when you are programming drums um, the term for that is humanizing just makes it sound more natural like an actual drummer played it rather than a computer which is definitely what we want okay so what I did right there is clicked and dragged and highlighted all of that and I'll kind of show you why I'm gonna drag the whole thing over because I actually added that little intro a little bit too early um, at least from the drum part I have in my head right now this song I'm doing is literally all just kind of I'm just improvising right now <laughs> Um, right now, just finding symbols that I like, that's always the hardest part about programming drums. <laughs> and with symbols, the main thing I've learned, especially program symbols, you, a lot of the times we're going to want to bring the velocity quite a bit down compared to the other drums. Um, just so it doesn't sound like the symbols are just being wailed on and hit way too hard. Um, they kind of tend to drown out everything else when that does happen. There are certain parts where it is called for, but um, definitely, definitely not all the time. <laughs> so yeah, right now we're just laying down a basic beat, um, kind of changing some of the velocities here and there, um, just to make it sound, once again, a little more authentic, like a real drummer played it. Clicking and dragging to highlight all of these, and now what I'm going to do is hold down uh, Option. Um, with all these highlighted, hold down Option. And then I'm going to click and drag. This will actually duplicate um, that part that I highlighted wherever that I drag it to. Um, now what we're going to do is just kind of just change up the second part just a little bit to give it a little bit more flair. Cool. Yeah, so um, that's the start right there. Well, I'm going to highlight all of this right now. Um, and then from there, let's go ahead and do the same thing again. Just so we can kind of get the section of the song done a little bit faster as opposed to tediously programming everything out. The great thing is you can always change the second half if you want to, or first half, second half. Um, because... You can make any changes at any point with MIDI, which is a great part. Um, right there, I'm just taking out that last part so that I can program a little fill in just to mix things up a little bit. Kind of carry it to the next part. And on fills, I definitely do like to uh, mess with the velocities quite a bit. I mean, you imagine a real drummer playing it, not every hit's gonna be the same. Um, makes it sound a little more authentic as opposed to kind of that machine gun sound that you don't really want in most cases. I tend to make the first hit of each drum a little bit harder and then kind of go down a little bit from there because when you're actually drumming usually the first hit is usually the hardest um, on each drum so Okay, so I'm going to show you a bit different way now of kind of like pasting over um, to duplicate a section. So instead of holding down option and dragging, I highlighted all of that. What I'm going to do is actually hold down command um, and then hit C to copy that whole section. Then what I'll do is put my playhead at the very end of what I just copied. Um, and then what I did was hit Command V. 
and what command V does is pastes what I just copied. Cool, so we got a pretty good first section laid down here. Um, with that being said, I'm going to show you kind of this general control panel right here on the user interface, the graphical user interface for the drums. Um, so you have kick, snare, toms, hi-hat cymbals, percussion, etc. cetera. Um, within this, you can change the level of each drum. However, you're not able to actually change the EQ of each drum by itself. You can only change the EQ of the whole kit by itself. Um, and honestly, that's, you know, not ideal for most situations. Uh, most plugins, drum plugins, and a lot of DAWs will come with a feature where you can route each drum out to multiple outputs. This is not the case in GarageBand, so I'm going to show you kind of a way around that to kind of hack that, actually. That way we can process each drum individually. Uh, what I'm going to do is select this kit right here that we have. I'm going to hit Command D. Um, that is going to go ahead and basically just make an exact duplicate of the track minus the actual um, MIDI data up there. We're going to title that first one kick, title that second one snare, um, and then make another one, command D again. We're going to go ahead and title that one toms, and then we're going to do that one more time here and title this one right here symbols. And I'll kind of show you what we're doing, what we're getting at here in a second. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, what you want to do is go up to the kick track up here. And how we do this is we're going to click these little buttons right here and basically turn off everything but the kick. This is going to make it so just the kick plays on this track. Go down to the snare, do the exact same thing, but basically turn off everything but the snare as opposed to the kick. And I'm doing that by just clicking those little white buttons. Um, going on the toms, kind of same thing again. Everything but the toms is going to go off. All right, perfect. And symbols, um, everything but the symbols. And I actually kind of made a mistake right here, actually, that I realized after. Um, you're going to want to keep the hi hat on as well, since that's technically part of the symbols. Um, I fixed that later on in the session, but I just forgot to let you guys know that right now, just so you don't make the same mistake as I did. Now, what you do is hold down Option and basically drag that uh, kick track down to every other track. And you'll see now what it did is basically separated everything out. So I'm going to click this uh, little headphone icon right here. That's for solo. So that'll play just that track. And you hear just the kick. That's what we wanted. Perfect. Um, all right. And snare. All we can hear is a snare. That's once again what we wanted. Uh, <laughs> not a lot of toms to speak of in this track. And just the cymbals. Perfect. All right, perfect. Now I'm going to show you guys um, just some kind of EQ basics on drums. Um, so with that being said, if you're not in this window, click that knob icon. Go ahead and click the I in the left-hand corner up there. Click drop down on plugins. You can see we already have an EQ and a compressor on here right now. Um, we're going to go ahead and open up the EQ. I don't think there's really, yeah, there's really nothing. It's not doing anything right now. So, um, so for the kick, that one right there is called a high pass filter. Kind of filters out some of the low rumbly frequencies um, that we don't necessarily need in our audio. Just kind of crowds everything up. Um, all right, now we're going to go ahead and click right there. This is the high shelf filter. Um, this is going to get us a little more attack out of the kick. Um, that kind of high end slap. Turn that up just a little bit. Cut a little bit of those muddy mid range frequencies down a little bit. Um, just because I kind of felt the kick had a lot of that in there. Boost a little bit of these up here. Cool. Yeah, that sounds good for now. Okay, perfect. Now move on to the snare. Do the same thing. Just open up an EQ track in that plugins window on the snare. 
take out a little bit of that low frequency we'll add a little bit of oomph to the snare kind of crisp it up a little bit in that high end and we're gonna go ahead and also boost a little bit up here just add a little bit of attack Oh, okay, perfect. All right, so move on to the cymbals. Um, didn't really use too many toms in this song, so I'm not going to really focus on those too much right now. Um, cymbals, we're going to cut out quite a bit of the low end um, with that high pass filter. Um, just with these specific simple cymbal samples, um, they definitely have a lot of kind of nasty low end mud in them. Not really a big fan of, but you can always work with that. We're going to cut down a little bit of the mid frequencies. When you do this, you're going to want to make your Q, which is down here. That's how narrow or wide the cut or boost is. Kind of want to make that a bit higher number. Um, because when you cut, you want to be able to cut um, less of a range of frequencies or else it sounds a little bit unnatural. Okay, we're going to close that out. And keep in mind, we could go very much more into detail on this. Um, however, I'm just kind of just showing you guys basics at the moment. Um, in future videos, I do want to elaborate a lot more on EQ um, and compression and different types of processing for you guys. All right. Now what we're going to do is record some guitars. So we're going to go and press that plus button that I just did to do that. Um, select record using a microphone or line input. Click create. All right, so now what we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and, so don't already have that open. Um, right here you can see what input you have selected on your interface. Um, so I'm using input one, so I'll have input one selected there. From there, you can go down to your plugins and add an amp simulator. Um, I mostly use amp sim sims when I am recording guitars, so Logic, I mean not Logic, I'm sorry, GarageBand does have quite a few um, built-in amp sims, so we're going to go and check those out and kind of see what we got here. All right, so right when you open this, it'll bring up a default setting. Um, to go through some of the presets that are available, we'll go up here where it says factor default, and um, from there you would be able, you're able to see quite a few different options. Um, let's see. Modern American Stack, American Stack Distort. I am going for a distorted tone in this song, so let's go ahead and give that a shot. All right, so up here, as you can see, uh, GarageBand does have a built-in tuner. Um, with that being said, it's a pretty handy little feature. Um, definitely got to stay in tune, so. All right. So with that being said, I do have that open right here where my mouse is, is where you would be able to turn on input monitoring so you can hear, hear what you're playing. Tuning is the best part of recording, hands down. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm not going to go through the whole tuning process because that's boring. But <laughs> All right, so, so we have um, this GarageBand um, knockoff of a Mesa rectifier. Um, not really hating the way it sounds so far. Um, all right, cool. So um, right up here, as you can see, there's this one, two, three, four. That is your count in for when you record. So it gives you one bar. Um, you might be able to change that. Um, to record, you're either going to hit R on the keyboard or click the record icon up um, near the top of the screen, kind of by that play button up there to the left of where it shows what bar and beat you're on. Now 
All right, perfect. So I um, recorded one little section here. What we're going to do is trim that um, to the end of that last bar there. Hold down Option. We're going to go and drag it over since I just I'm going to repeat that part through again. Okay, cool. Um, so with that being said, you can see it plays through again. Right here, I'm kind of just cycling through the different microphone options they have for the speaker cabinets and GarageBand, um, a few different options. What we're going to do is create another audio track. I'm going to call this Guitar 2. Um, when I, ever I record guitars, I do like to double everything just to give it a wider sound, give it a fuller sound. What you're going to want to do is right where my mouse is here, pan that first one left, pan that second one right. Um, panning your guitars hard left and hard right definitely does give them a very much wider sound um, and everything will sound much better. All right. So what I'm doing right now is on this guitar one track, I'm actually going into the plugin, going there, clicking save as saving a preset, um, just so I can kind of have a somewhat consistent um, basis to go off of for the second tone. Then what I'll do is on the guitar two track, go into the, the amp designer, open up that plugin, then I'll click on the same spot that I did to save the preset, and then I'll, the preset will appear right there. Go ahead and select that. And then we have basically the same, basically the same sound. Kind of same idea as the last track up there. I recorded one pass through. I'm just going to copy and paste the second one over just to save time right now. And what I'm doing right now is changing the tone slightly on the second track. Um, I definitely think it helps push your sound out more, create that wall of sound when your tones are slightly different on left and right. All right, what I did here is I added an EQ plugin um, to the one of the guitar tracks. Now I'm gonna do this on both the guitar tracks. Um, right now I'm just gonna take out some of those low frequencies, filtering out a little bit of those super high frequencies that sound fizzy up there. Um, taking out a little bit of the low mids. Make room. And what I'll do here is I'll save a preset as well to copy to the first guitar track. Um, just to kind of, once again, save a little bit of time, keep things consistent here. In a lot of cases, I will add some pretty different EQ to the guitar left and guitar right tracks. But um, in this case of the tutorial, for now, it's going to show you guys just kind of the basics right now. Um, once again, just loaded that preset that I just saved. All right, yeah, sounds pretty good for now, so we'll go ahead and move on. Um, I have most guitars tracked. Now we're going to go ahead and do bass. I don't really have a good physical bass right now, so I have been stuck programming bass. Um, we'll go ahead and click that plus button up there. We'll choose software instrument, uh, create. And then what we're going to do is it brings up by default the classic electric, classic electric piano. However, um, once again, if that little left menu doesn't show up, click that filing kind of filing cabinet icon. Select bass. Um, we'll do finger style bass since once again I don't have a lot of this stuff downloaded in GarageBand right now. 
So you can see it brings up the graphical user interface of the bass virtual instrument. I opened up my piano roll. Just kind of doing the same thing as drums, really just holding it on command and clicking where I want to program my notes in the piano roll. All right, and I'm just messing with the velocities a bit to kind of same idea as drums, make it sound a little more like someone actually played it rather than just the exact same exact same intensity of note every single time, which is just drives me crazy, so Cool. All right. And sometimes I like to mute my guitars. Just kind of make sure everything's sounding good on the bass, make sure I'm doing all the right notes here. Cool. All right. Shorten that last one a little bit because the guitars are cutting off a little bit at the end there. All right, so yeah, definitely not gonna make you guys sit through the whole process of me programming bass. It's pretty, pretty boring, but kind of show you guys the basics of how to do it at least. Once again, same idea, roughly as record as programming drums, um, just different sounds. <laughs> All right, um, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to get a bit better guitar tone. This, so these are the stock GarageBand sounds right now, however, I wanna show you guys a plugin that I have. Um, it's a paid plugin, however, it's fairly cheap. Um, I would say right around $35 the last time I checked, I believe, from a company called Audio Assault. It is called Grind Machine 2. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description. Um, it's a very versatile amp sim, has a lot of different tones on it. So that's the default tone that you open right when it comes up. Sounds quite a bit better actually. Just definitely want to show you guys, you know, I did initially want to just do GarageBand plugins on this um, on this video. But I wanted to go to go to show you guys that even with GarageBand you can expand it quite a bit. Um, it, has support for any plugin that comes in audio unit format. So um, yeah, this is a great plugin. Once again, co pretty cost effective. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and add that to the second guitar track as well. Um, and I'm actually going to use a different amp model on the second guitar track. Um, I really like this PVGL Fire down here. Has a little bit more mid-range to it, kind of helps balance out um, the other guitar track and once again kind of helps create that wall of sounds and kind of just pushes everything out, um, makes it sound a lot more thick. Perfect, all right. Um, guitars are already fitting in the pocket way better perfect um so now now i will show you guys i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is go to the snare add the space designer reverb plugin to some of the reverb section this is gonna help um add a little bit less dry you know take away a bit of the dryness to the snare make it sound like it was actually played in a bit bigger room, give it a bit bigger sound. These samples are pretty dry, so... Helps add a bit of ambience. Alright, now what we're gonna do is go to that master section up here um, in that control panel. Um, basically just do a rough master on the track. This is usually, usually the last step. Um, I went in and opened up a compressor under that channel EQ there. 
Um, so basically I'm going to add a compressor just across everything. Um, so basically this is affecting all the tracks at once rather than just one track at a time. This will even out the dynamics of the whole track just a little bit. Adds a bit more smack to the track as well. All right, perfect. Now we're gonna open up this plugin right here. Um, it was already there. Um, it's called the Exciter. Basically what that does when you open it up is it will add a bit of harmonic saturation, um, just kind of the frequencies in and around the frequency you set in that frequency section. Yeah, it sounds good up there. Kind of helps bring out some of the overtones of everything a little more, uh, make everything sound, sound a little bit stronger. All right, so the last step is a limiter here. Um, with that being said, that basically will make it so when you set the output level, it won't go above that output level. Um, usually what I will do is set it to negative 0.1 dB so it doesn't hit that ceiling or clipping, which is zero decibels. Um, just kind of helps get a little more oomph out of your track and kind of evens out the dynamics a little bit. All right, cool. Um, sometimes I just like to kind of see what the presets do here, um, see what presets there are. a little too much, so bring it down a little bit. Cool, yeah, it sounds pretty good there. All right, so now we'll play the whole song through. guys so i'm honestly really stoked about how that turned out um we could have taken a little bit more time on it and you know gotten a little bit better results however you know with the time that i took on it which is only about an hour i'm honestly really stoked about how that turned out it turned out really rad sounds really good um however i really just wanted to just use this video to be able to give you guys a solid footing and also just kind of a head start um in your beginning the beginning of your journey to production just definitely wanted, wanted to show you guys that you are able to get amazing results, even with free software. Um, most of the plugins that I did use in the video were just the GarageBand stock plugins. However, as I did mention, um, when we were you know doing the process, there were a couple of plugins that I did use that are pretty, pretty low on the cost spectrum. Um, I'll definitely post links to those below in the description so you guys will be able to check those out. Um, both from really, really, really great plugin manufacturers. Um, you know, definitely in future videos, I do want to expand more um, on mixing techniques, layering, um, and a lot of other audio techniques that can make your stuff pop and sound really good. Definitely let me know in the comments below um, anything that you would like to see in future videos. I love getting ideas. Um, this is my first educational video, if you will. Um, haven't really done anything like this before, um, so definitely just let me know in the comments what you do want to see. I would love to help you guys out as much as I can. Definitely hope this video helped you out, and if you did like it, make sure you do subscribe and also hit that like button down there. 
Um, definitely appreciate you guys watching today. Hope you have a good day and happy producing.